So, in June of 2007, Apple released the Apple iPhone. I think some of you might have an iPhone in your pocket. Now, this iPhone, hmm, what did that iPhone do? Was it revolutionary, innovative maybe? I sure would say so. I've seen, I don't know, probably tens of thousands of phones in my life, and actually billions of people around the world have been connected utilizing the iPhone. Well, how about a 128 gigabyte flash drive? Some of you might have used those back in the day, maybe like three, four years back. Nowadays, we don't really use them anymore with the cloud. But that, too, it's pretty innovative. Back in the 90s, we had uh, floppy disks, 1.44 megabytes. The 128 gigabyte flash drive has more than 80,000 times the storage. It's half the price on Amazon. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, notice how none of the innovations I just mentioned covered world peace, American gridlock, domestic terrorism, or humanitarian crises, political misinformation. Some of you might know I uh, enjoy politics a little bit too much. But on all of these fronts, we've been headed down a path of destruction, yet we really haven't seen any innovation even remotely associated with that. Well, what about Google Maps, Google itself, human genome sequencing? Doubling human life expectancy in less than a decade, those are all beautiful innovations, but ultimately they don't really do anything for humanitarian crises, American gridlock, or misinformation. Before we move any further, let's start by defining innovation. No, your iPhone's latest 15.4.1.9 update doesn't really count. Big picture, innovation is progressive and forward-thinking change. Innovation has the power to move mountains and ultimately maybe even end climate change. So what we're trying to do here is really something new. And ultimately, what, what's being created is that uh, innovation, it's kind of stalled in the social entrepreneurship sector. So who's responsible for that critical misalign of innovative efforts, you ask? Well, we all kind of are, right? We're all buying these products that ultimately don't do anything for us. An iPhone does something great, and Apple has this thing called CSR, and so does every other big company. CSR is corporate social responsibility. Now, it sounds pretty awesome, right? But really what it is is Apple innovate, innovating maybe 10 grand, okay? And innovating 10 grand means they throw 10 grand at a nonprofit, market the heck out of those 10 grand, being like, hey, look at us. We gave 10 grand to this nonprofit. We support this. We support that. It is useless. It's completely useless, and it's completely performative. Some of us might know about performative activism. Some of us might have participated in performative activism. At the end of the day, it's performative. Performative is not good. So what do we want to do here? We want to redefine innovation. Now, we have countless ideas, right? I mean, we're Gen Z. We're, we're known for the ideas. But the thing is, we need to capitalize on those said solutions. Human curiosity and creativity is our strength. But on a more Gen Z relevant note, we are action oriented. And ultimately, we all love getting involved in stuff. We're at Gun High School here. Most, there's probably 50 <laughs> nonprofit founders out here. We've probably got a bunch of people who are into some political organizations or involved otherwise. But at the end of the day, we have these innovative ideas, all with this aim to solve a current problem. The key to change and innovation lies in the unification of the team. And we're great at unification. We're good at putting together a team, but we need to utilize that team. Unification and discourse is the key to being able to move forward in a very effective manner. Discourse in and of itself is this unique thing that I've been battling around a little bit as I'm into politics. Some of you might be Democrats, some might be Republicans, uh, some people might be Democrats not wanting to speak up, and some might be Republicans not wanting to speak up. Right? I know I've felt it before, uh, and plenty of people around America feel it. As we speak, the capacity and potential for Gen Z's innovation is really only growing. So instead of only presenting a future of endless possibilities here, I'm going to introduce you to a few current change makers and initiatives that are driving social innovation as we speak. Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell are two favorite politicians. We always love them straddling and maybe playing some chess matches. But do you really want to see them partake in another ceaseless chess match that really just ends in another stalemate? Mm, no, not really. That's for C-SPAN. Again, I'm passionate about politics and discourse. It's what I've been babbling about this entire time. It's what you've heard me babbling about for the last 
probably five, six years. Um, but at the end of the day, don't underestimate my capability or my passion. That's my mom's job. An organization that personally I'm involved in is, uh, is YIP, the Institute for Ethan Policy. At YIP, we've been uh, doing a lot of different things in the political realm. And at an ultimatum, what, there's one thing we want to do, and that's to fix politics. There's thousands of organizations that are youth-run, adult-run, out there that want to fix politics, but they all lack resources, lack an innovative approach, or both. And at the end of the day, they're not doing much, right? YIP has managed to become probably the leading youth-run nonprofit that is in the political sector, which is quite sad considering that within the first year we spent $192, right? So this innovative approach we had and proper corporate social responsibility from corporations who want to support proper politics and proper political discourse was great. But the thing is, we need more innovators. We need more people to explore more fields, right? I'm not doing climate change. Most of the competent people I know aren't doing climate change. They're involved in politics or making school life more accessible or something of that sort. The next step, however, here is applying what we learn in school to modern crises. Now, you might ask, well, how do I use that quadratic equation I, uh, I heard about in ninth grade to critically think? It can be difficult. But the problem is, school should be the place where they teach us to make that connection. Critical thinking is what ultimately gets us to the next point. When we invest in youth, the world reaps the benefits. We've seen it with YIP. We've seen it with about 15, 16, 17 other organizations out there. But guess what? We need more. We need more people with more ideas willing to test them out. Along with investing in youth, the second prong really necessary to redirect innovation is to leverage innovations already made. There's a lot of great innovative ideas out there. Corporate social responsibility has been the upbringing and ultimately the biggest part in, pro in the private sector that has done anything to promote innovation. But sometimes they also invest in bad things, but that's a whole other conversation. Let's take Elon Musk for an example here. You all know Elon Musk. Uh, he owns a couple of mansions around here, built himself a 50 square foot home and decided to live in there for a bit for publicity. But end of the day, the innovation potential behind what he's building is enormous, right? Yes. But um, recently, he's undertaken this pretty major new ideal. It's uh, making space travel accessible to all. To the moon has taken on a whole other meaning. But end of the day, he's got this team of probably America's most competent scientists, billions of dollars backing this idea. What if he stuck that to maybe trying to reverse climate change, maybe trying to lobby some governments to go climate zero or net zero even? Those pre-existing resources can be redirected and should be redirected. And the people that can redirect them or work to redirect them is Gen Z. Because guess what? The other generations, they've been around for a while, but they haven't really done that. <laughs> so simply put, we must do what capitalists do best, incentivize and compete. Competition with entrepreneurs is almost like this high school gun. Um, oftentimes, I'm talking to other people, and we always laugh about how competitive we all are. But of course, I always laugh more. Um, but end of the day, what we want to do is we want to create a competitive market that rewards social responsibility. We want to invest in brands. We want to buy brands that are socially responsible. How are they socially responsible? Corporate social responsibility, CSR. That's one thing you're going to take away from this, CSR. Google it, get into it, uh, go to your local organization, sign up for grants, get organizations to do more grants. End of the day, the nonprofit sector and nonprofit space, unlike the realm of private corporations, offers a solid mission and a solid selling point, right? They're environmentally and ethically golden and typically have a tangible impact. The fact is that what makes nonprofits different is accountability. Why accountability, you ask? Well, uh, if I'm investing in a nonprofit, investing, AKA donating, it's probably because I care about what they're doing. But if it's save the whales, and I look at their tangible impact in the last year, and they've saved zero whales, I'm going to stop donating to that nonprofit, right? Exactly. And that's how most rich people invest in the things they care about. Now, we're facing numerous crises stacked on top of each other. COVID-19, climate change, partisan gridlock, and globalism. Innovation is more necessary than ever, especially with relation to those couple of places. 
At a time when the nation is the most divided it's really ever been, guess what? We need to start talking to each other. Because 50% of the nation is not going to move forward. We need 100% of the nation to get the rest of the world on par with what we want to do with regard to climate change. Regardless, while tomorrow might be the best labor-saving device of today, I ask you to take the initiative to call for effective change now. Trust that you have the skill and the knowledge to make an impact. Thank you.